hey, this does not look attractive to many state governments. That's one thing. And then, of course, um, when we talk about all these, you know, nitty gritties, um, it, it, it takes a lot of attention and um, a lot of thinking, which again might not really be things that many politicians in office would want to get into. Unlike, I want a contract for roads. I mean, that one looks very straightforward. You can look at the figures and then you can talk about the contractor and the time to finish and all of that. But when you talk about reaching out to farmers, you know, someone who plants an acre of land, 10 acres, maybe 20 and at the very most, you know, and you want to talk about them cutting across so many local governments in the state. It doesn't look so attractive. But actually, this is one of the things we should be talking about because there are examples in developed, I mean, sorry, in other countries, not necessarily developed, um, like in countries of Asia, for instance, the very uh, backbone of their food security is small-scale farmers, yeah. India, Vietnam, and so many other places like that. Even China that many people talk about. There are many small-scale farmers there. And not of course, even there are Chinese people who are trying to promote the, that kind of small-scale farming that they do there, right here in Nigeria. So that shows clearly that small-scale farming is very, very important. Of course, it's central to what we do. Developed countries that people like to make reference to, there are still small-scale farmers there. Mm -hmm. So now, but the point one is trying to make is the governments at the state level actually don't see this as attractive. You mentioned Lake Rice. Again, you know, I said I was going to talk in the realms of politics. If, you know, people talk and think devoid of political consideration, yes, the kind of initiative that, you know, was implemented between Kebi and Lagos when it first started can be implemented again. Because I remember at that time, Doc, um, um, Saidu Dakingiri, the governor of Kebi State, started the uh, partnership with uh, Governor uh, Raji Fashola in Lagos State. They belong to different political parties. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, this issue of division of labor or, you know, or at least uh, complementarity came up. And so Kebi produces the party, Lagos takes it up and mills and sells to the consuming public. Wonderful idea. How many more states can do this? Look beyond the uh, political uh, boundaries, you know, and, and try to come together and think about what can we do together for the benefits of our people? Mm. And so that's the kind of a thing that I think is grossly lacking here. Otherwise, the lake rice you're talking about, you know, is not only in the rice uh, sector alone. Many other aspects, you know, could easily be, I mean, this could be replicated in many other aspects. The concept is actually what is more important to yeah. me. Uh -huh. So, and, um, you know, uh, one part of the country produces this and the other part processes it and then takes it to the market. Wonderful idea. So those are the kinds of things I believe we should be looking at. Then, and then, of course, the, um, the politicians generally, and this is another problem, uh, because of the followership also, they tend not to want to uh, you know, give incentives out, irrespective of your political leanings. And so when it comes to sharing or distributing the, 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 the input, the incentives, if, if, it is, if it has to do with funds or maybe some you know materials like imputes that we're talking about like fertilizer and all of that people tend to favor more of their party members for as long as this is happening and of course in the market you don't know what political party the person that is selling you know belongs to mm. it doesn't come up wherever you go as a matter of fact most of our daily uh, um, activities commercial activities they are you know, politically blind. Yes. So, so why is it that when it comes to the issue of intervention, politics comes into play? And that's, where there's, a, there's, well, that's where there's a problem. And even among the politicians in the same party, there will still be camps. Mm -hmm. And so, so, and so th this one is a favored one, this one is, a, you know, is an outsider mm -hmm. and all of that. So those are the kinds of things that need to be looked into. So I think for us to get it right. And given what my uh, uh, other colleague, you know, from Abuja right. just said, when you look at the importation, I actually didn't want to start, you know, reeling out figures, but it was good that it actually put those things in perspective. Yeah. Now, if we look at the amount of money that we spend importing food, then we will get serious about producing locally. And you know, we have a lot of things going for us in this country. Our weather is fair. And of course, for the most part, the southern part of the country has rain, you know, you know uh, every year. The northern part of the country also, even with lesser rain, has some specific types of crops that they can produce yeah. and, and produce very well. Yeah. So, and these are some of the things we should be leveraging upon. And then even when it comes to dry season, um, there are many parts of the Northern uh, uh, Nigeria where 
we could do dry season farming using irrigation. Mm -hmm. And so all we just need to do is policy, strategy, and their implementation. And we should think about how to get this right. And we should get very serious about it because there's a lot of pressure on us. And we can produce and export if we are really serious.